My name is Alexandra Lansky from uh, Yale University. It's my pleasure to be here today with Dr. Bill Weintraub. We're going to be discussing your, your late-breaking trial, the survival after PCI or cabbage in older patients with stable multivessel coronary disease. So, Bill, do you want to give us a little bit of background as to the, uh, the study and the importance of, of studying this? Right. Well, sure. Obviously, this is a very big issue, um, revascularization in people with stable ischemic heart disease. This is a major collaboration between the Society of Thoracic Surgeons and the American College of Cardiology uh, Foundation. As I think many of our viewers know, uh, um, uh, both of these organizations have very large databases. Uh, um, the total number of patients now with NCDR is now over 14 million. Um, <coughs> and um, we've been able to hook both of these databases to the CMS 100% denominator file so we can look at long-term outcome, which is giving us four-year survival. So we took patients from the drug-eluting stent era, we took patients from 2004 through 2007, and follow-up through 2008, and we have a, a cohort of patients with, between SDS and, a, and ACC that, that with two or three vessel disease. Um, <coughs> who got either drug-eluting stents or, or coronary artery bypass grafting for your um, uh, follow-up. Um, so this is an observational study and then we use very advanced statistical techniques to account for treatment selection bias. And can you just highlight the, the top-level findings? Right. I'm sure there's a lot of detail into that. But There's a lot of detail. Um, what's being presented pre presently uh, um, is the survival analysis. Mm -hmm. So the primary endpoint of all of this whole study called ASSERT is uh, survival. Um, and what we found is there's no difference in survival at um, one year, but at four years there's a 20 percent uh, advantage to uh, coronary artery bypass grafting. Now the question is, is this represent coronary artery bypass grafting offers, offering superior revascularization? or is there treatment selection bias that we could not account for adequately with the statistical techniques that we used. So I think that there's a whole host of questions, uh, you know, that would be interesting to delve into. We're not going to have a whole lot of time here, but one of the issues that's coming out is the completeness of revascularization on the stenting side on patients with multivessel disease. Did you take a look at that? And also, you know, what kinds of stents are being included in there? A lot of the first generation drug eluting stents, we've sort of gone beyond that at this point with better outcomes with more recent uh, second and third generation stents. So this will be mostly first generation yeah, because okay. it's through 2007. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, <coughs> um, and completely sort of vascularization will be greater with, with um, coronary surgery. Part of the problem with, with um, a study like this using large databases is the quality of the data uh, in the angiographic components of, of the NCDR, which we have to rely on. Um, and to look at that further, this is coming along, we actually have a subset analysis of 2,000 patients in whom we have a syntax score, and those patients will be able to look at them in much greater detail and be able to a answer much deeper questions, such as the one you, you raised about completeness of revascularization. So is syntax score now being included in the AC, uh, ACC and CDR? No, it's, it's okay. not. It's not in okay. any of these really large da okay. databases. So what we did is we had to go and have these films angiographically reviewed. Okay. That gives us another opportunity because we're going to validate the angiographic data that we do have in the NCDR, which has never been done against QCA. Mm -hmm. Exactly. No, that's fascinating. Have you looked at the diabetic subgroup? I mean, yes, obviously we have. that's going to be a very important uh, cohort to look at. Yes, we've looked at uh, lots and lots and lots of different subgroups and found really quite consistent results. Good. So how, how is this going to change practice? Is it going to change practice or is it just reflecting sort of a, a prior way, always catching up with these um, registries? So is it just reflecting, you know, almost, a, you know, first generation DES, maybe not so applicable in today's uh, practice? So I, I think <coughs> what we, we learned from, from a CERT <coughs> is, um, first of all, I think doctors make really good decisions. Uh, and I think that, that this may shift things back towards coronary surgery a little bit, but it's not going to be mm -hmm. some huge change. I don't think anybody's uh, expecting that. I think what we can say is um, that uh, obviously surgery is a much bigger intervention than the, the percutaneous inter interventions, um, and um, uh, that it's a, it's a tremendous thing to, just, to, to say to someone, we need to, you need to have coronary surgery. Um, and I think that what we can say from a CERT is, is it would seem to us that doctors are making good decisions 
is when they, when they send a patient to coronary surgery, I think that, that patients can be confident that, that their, their doctors are thinking about this well and make good decisions. The other thing I think that comes out of a CERT is it pushes the methods of comparative effectiveness analysis using observational data about as far as we can. Right. Um, and uh, I think that that will help inform the field of comparative effectiveness analysis. As far as I know, using large data sets like this, non using, <coughs> using, using clinical databases rather than, than administrative databases, this is probably the largest and most complex um, uh, comparative effectiveness study to be done. Right. Uh, perhaps in all of, all, all, of, all of medicine so far, and I think it will help inform um, people about how to do this, and also the limitations, some of which you've, you've brought up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you for, uh, for taking the time to come and speak with us today. Um, so this concludes our interview with Dr. Weintraub. Thank you very Thanks. much.